All right, I'm the person between you and lunch, so I'll be uh, brief. Um, I want to continue the talk about antithrombotics, um, uh, but with a little different slant, and that's this. How to manage patients with atrial fibrillation who are anticoagulated, who undergo PCI, who also need antiplatelet agents. And so a quick show of hands, how many of you all in the past, let's say, um, month, have seen a patient uh, with atrial fibrillation who's anticoagulated undergo PCI? So how many of you within the past month? So essentially almost everyone in the, in the crowd. And so this is, this is a big issue, right? We're going to see more and more of it. And so we're going to start with the case, just sort of poll the audience. And this is a 76-year-old patient who has chronic atrial fibrillation, uh, hypertension, and undergoes PCI for stable disease of the LAD, or excuse me, for unstable disease, uh, non-STEMI, in a drug eluding stent is placed. So before the stent was placed, the patient was on a Pixaban for a year and had done well. And now with this new stent in, what combination of medicines are you going to send this person home on? So warfarin, aspirin, and Plavix, aspirin, and uh, Brillanta, Brillanta, aspirin, and Apixaban, uh, Brillanta and Apixaban, Warfarin and Plavix, or Xeralto at a lower dose plus Plavix. So a lot of choices here, sorry for that, but those are, that's the confusion that we face. So let's take a vote here, let's see, of these six combinations, what would you guys choose for this lady who was chronically on Apixaban and did well on it? So good, so a lot of, um, a lot of uh, answers here we have. Uh, some people choosing uh, multiple therapy with aspirin plus um, uh, Plavix. Uh, we have a group here uh, choosing Ticagalor uh, plus aspirin plus Apixaban. And then uh, smaller groups choosing uh, Warfarin plus Plavix, 10%, and an equal group choosing Xeralto plus Plavix. All right, so we're going to talk today about the background, why this is important, and, uh, and unfortunately I have to go through some clinical trials. There's only three right now, but it's important to discuss these because I think there are some nuances that are going to help us choose our regimen for our patient here. And at the end, we're going to try to put it together, and if there's some time left over, I'm going to tell you a story about my college roommate. Um, this is a big deal. So atrial fibrillation is common, and it's going to get more common. If you look at these numbers, now once again, these are based on population models. But if you look here in 2030, which really isn't that far away, there could be as much as, as maybe 10 to 14 million Americans with atrial fibrillation. And this is part of the reason why uh, there's been such an um, increase in the number of therapeutic options in terms of anti 